to act like their parents. And that is a really key thing that you need to remember as a coach when we are dealing with the parents of your team because they are, you are a secondary model for your players. The primary model for your players is your parents. And that is where the importance of creating a culture comes in. Your team is going to have a culture. The question is, is it the one that you want the team to have? And the only way that's going to happen is if you take the reins on the culture. And at PCA, we define culture as the way we do things here. And that is something that, as a double goal coach, in order to get your team to honor the game, you are going to need to take the reins of culture and drill into your players and your parents we do things here on this team. And we go. So, yeah, okay. So, probably the most important thing that you can do to create the culture you're going to want, the culture you're looking for. Yeah, I wanted that next slide. Uh, the culture that you want is a self-control routine and um, this is probably the number one thing that trips you up as a coach and um, trips up the parents is, is the reacting when things are going wrong in the game and we already talked about uh, brushing it off with the, with the players and having them focus on the next pitch, uh, the next play, things like that. That's hard to do for a, for a player when they see their coach and their parents reacting. And if they see their coach and their parents reacting negatively to, to, to things that go wrong during the game, they're going to do that too. That's, like I said, they, they never fail to act like their parents or the coach. And they will not be able to get their head back in the game if they're having a problem with, with self-control on bad calls. And... I personally, as a coach, uh, this was one of the main things I had to work on when I started coaching baseball. Because I'm a very reactionary, uh, reactionary person when it comes to I get really wrapped up in it. If you ask my wife, you know, I'm watching sports on TV, it's loud, <laughs> and and I get very wrapped up in the game. And when I'm out on the field with my players, I used to tend to do the same thing. If something, you know. Play, I'd get super excited. Bad play would happen. And we talked about how uh, how the, the players, uh, your athletes, um, see the, uh, the your nonverbals uh, and and, and how your nonverbals stick with them eight to ten times more than your verbals, uh, as far as the, uh, as far as that goes. Your uh, reaction to to bad situations happening is that you make that as positive as possible and have a good self control and also as far as your coach goes this is one of the main things you're gonna to want to talk about at the at the parent meeting that you have at the beginning of the evening, maybe two or three times during the year, is let's all work on our self control routine because when things happen Inevitably, when we score our game, we're going to want to present the positive attitude and keep our kids' heads in the game. Does anybody out there not have an idea of what uh, an example of a, of a coach's self-control routine might be? Um, I think just taking a deep breath sometimes, taking a, a swig of your water, walking away from the situation. Great, um, great. Yep, anybody else? Um, you know, I, 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 I rely on my uh, fellow coaches. When, when we get mad or angry, we, we, we talk to each other um, instead of, you know, yelling at the ref or getting upset with the players. We, you know, we, we turn to each other and, and, and uh, vent, vent, quietly vent to each other. Excellent. The, the, the mini coach huddle is, is uh, <laughs> a, a really good one. Mine is, mine is very simple. Um, I have uh, more or less trained myself uh, 
with any situation that happens, with good or bad, I react the same to it. And then I have an extra reaction if it was a good thing. Um, any react kid kid makes a great stop as uh, a kid out at first. I start with a off clap. So, yeah. All right. And that's that's all I say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it's a good thing. So now I'm like, hey, yo, great job, Johnny, and I'm giving him his, his five to one ratio as as much as I can. With the bad things that happen, we get the worst call in the face of the earth. He gacks it off his foot. Whatever happened, I do the same thing. Golf clap. All right. Okay. Okay. And then if it requires a touch off or settle down, whatever it is, if that's all I got. Just a golf clap. I'm looking at the kid who it affects, and I'm saying, next play, next pitch. And that allows me to take that crucial two to three seconds that you need to not react, to not show your players the reaction, and get yourself under control and move forward. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Speak, speaking of golf clap. To, uh, to golf the, clap, yeah. <laughs> golf clap. Okay, so I didn't get to my Jim Thompson uh, quote, but that was where I was going to end. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that's okay. You got through a lot. Okay. You did. Barry, I'm sorry I kept muting you. I think there was an echo or something. So I was just... Muting when I muted your screen, the echo didn't come through for Mark. So I hope you didn't didn't want you to take it personally. I just wanted to let you know that's why I was muting you while Mark was talking. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So I wanted to see. We've got. Um, let's give you some feedback. Let's let's find out uh, some comments here. I thought you did a I thought you did a great job. I think I think you know your stuff very well. I have a, a few comments for you. Um, Ruben, would you like to start off, or would you like me to start? Um, why, why don't you start, Kelly? Okay. Uh, first of all, I, again, I like I like your personality. I think you have a you have a great sense of humor, and it comes through in your workshops. And it's very very comfortable to be in your audience and hear from you. Um, I liked the very beginning when you were saying like, "This is amazing. It's going to change the way you coach. This is this is you know." It, it really got the energy level up. Uh, what I'm a little bit concerned about is overhype. So that the you know the coaches in the room are like, "Wow, this is going to be fantastic!" and have any of them walk out and go, "I thought it was good, but it wasn't like as good as you said it was." I mean, just you almost don't want to hype it up too much. You know, it's like a right. show that you are a movie that you're all excited about, and then you know you watch it and you go, "Well, it wasn't that great." You know, so I think for you, it's really cool for you to bring up. You know, this was life changing for me. This really was amazing. I I personally have changed the way I coach, and I. You know, have learned so many things. I think that you can get super excited about. But you okay. know, kind of expecting the the audience to feel the same way right off the bat. I love the energy idea of it, but I think I would hesitate a little bit from from that. Um, okay. The other the other thing too, I thought I thought your choice of words was great. I thought the way you described things, you know, even as simple as the goal. You know, we are fierce and and competitive, and I think you brought that up a couple times. I like that. You also said instead of just saying winning and life lessons, you said, you know, we're about developing kids that win in life and who can win and lose with class. I think that's a really good point to bring up. I like the way you you really stressed the terminology and it was all very, very good. Um, the one hesitation with honoring the game that's tough is that it comes at the end of the workshop and there's a lot of information in it and the, the tendency is to not be interactive and I think you sort of fell to that tendency a little bit. I was just timing because I have a, a stopwatch here. But there were like 12 minutes in between where you didn't even ask us a question. So okay. as an audience member, I think especially at the end of the workshop, they start to tune out if they're not engaged. You know your stuff. You know the information, and you do well at explaining it. But I think for me as an audience member, I need to kind of wrestle with it a little bit in my head of how does this apply to me? What does this mean for me? What, think of a player that has been disrespectful to a teammate. How have you handled that as a coach? Have you brushed it under the rug? Have you brought it up to the team? What have you done to show respect for officials in your practices or in your games? Or do you just tell the kids, you've got to be respectful of officials? You know, just certain things gotcha. to get people talking because it's a long so time. During the, during, the, during the roots, the rules officials then be, be grabbing examples from coaches as we go through that. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just just from my own perspective, I think it was a long time to go without. Kelly, okay. Kelly, yeah. Kelly cool. that's that's where you you noticed a, a ten to twelve minute period where he did not ask us questions when he was going through roots. Is that what I heard you say? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Mark, you did ask us how many of you have been officials. So mm -hmm. you did ask a question, mm -hmm. and and you know, we so we you did. You did ask a low-level interact. I mean, I had, you know, I got a chance to raise my hand. So right. now you can say, what was your experience when you officiated, or um, what, was it easy? Um, there you go. You, you know, did you did you get all the calls right? Um, you, you know, so I think you, <laughs> you 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 started that type of conversation that that Kelly's talking about with with, with that question. And and by the way. In terms of whether you ask them to guess the, what the R and the O and the O and the T and the S stands for, um, I don't always do it either. Uh, it depends. But, but one reason I, I usually do, okay, so respect for the roots. What do you think the R stands for? The one reason I do is to, I want to keep the back and forth conversation mm -hmm. going. And that's just such a simple little way to... To, to do that, you know, um, so so you keep that in mind. Like, like I completely agree with Kelly. It's it's your preference, and um, you won't do it the same in each workshop. But one thing that that does is you ask them five times to respond to a question as you go through roots. In addition to the other stuff you, you're you're going to do, does that make sense, Mark? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think too, just in terms of just to piggyback what Ruben was saying, when you're talking about questioning, you did say how many of you were officials. You know, I, I almost put that in the same category as when your kids come home from school and you say, How was your school day? And they say, Good. Right. It was great. Except, you know? except and I, Kelly, except Kelly, that that question does create an opportunity for us to empathize with officials. Sure. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah, when I was an official well, it, what it I'm going to say is, the, to, to tag onto that question, how many of you have been officials? Yes. Who can tell me about a positive time you've had as an official? Great. Somebody right. tell me that. Who can tell me about a negative incident that you had as an official? You know, just right. like, how was your, not how was your day, but tell me about tell me about the hardest thing you did in school today. Tell me about something you right. learned. It's, yeah. Tell yeah. me about instead of yeah. yes or no. So it's just a, just a, a really it makes so much more interaction just by the way you phrase the question. But cool. and, you know, again, I like I liked your terminology for a lot of it. I liked the way you forced, you know, you said players get to live it. Um, as coaches, we need to live it. It's not just a matter of, you know, lip service. And, you know, kids fail to listen to their parents and never fail to act like that. And that's a sticky quote. I think I'll remember that. That's great. And take the reins on the culture. I mean, I think that's you, – you hit, you hit home the important parts. You emphasize the important parts, which I thought was great. Barry, did you have a, a comment for Mark? Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, Mark, good job, first of all, and I think the thing that I was most impressed about is that you were convincing, mm -hmm. and you could see that you were speaking from the heart, so to speak. You weren't just um, just talking. You were very, very con con convincing, and, and I felt that. If I, if I may respectfully make one little suggestion, and Absolutely. that would be at the beginning of the workshop in the introduction, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the um, the books for each participant are available, mm -hmm. and you might want to mention, might want to consider mentioning that the books are here and and what they can be used for aside from just reading. Yeah, good point, Barry. Thank you for catching that. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent, like Ruben. It. Did you have anything else? Yeah, you know, I, I Mark, I thought it was a very good uh, outing and and practice. Um, uh, you, you know, you, you, uh, uh, without being too repetitive, yeah, you, you know, Kelly mentioned personality. You smile. It's clear that you're happy to be here. You're excited about this. What's the word when you really, when you really strongly believe in something? And conviction? Yes, your conviction. Kel Kelly, I, 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 <laughs> yes, that's exactly the word I was looking for. Your conviction comes through loud and clear. And, and we want to be strong. On most points that we make, you know, we want to. We don't want to say, I, you know, and and, and we kind of think, we kind of believe, you know, we 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 believe, okay, with conviction. And then there's the balance that Kelly talked about. For example, when you go deliver a workshop, it's possible that you'll be in front of a bunch of double goal coaches already. Okay. And so you want to be cautious not to insinuate that 
everybody here is 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 not a double goal coach or not a positive coach. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so be right. be careful about. Um, you, you know, Kelly talked about choice of words. Um, so when you asked us who was the best coach we had, you know, maybe that's the question you 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 truly intend to ask. But I wonder if the question you wanted to ask is who was the most impactful coach you ever had, and okay. you know, th they're similar questions, but they could be taken a little differently. And so, so you know, I just want to make sure you're asking the, the 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 question that you really want to ask. And maybe you maybe you did. Um, and then lastly, on choice of words. By the way, I really liked it when you said, "I'm I'm a reactionary person. I've had to work on this. I I, I think humanizing yourself. And hey, I'm not perfect. You know, I think that's okay. awesome. Um, so. I'm going to give you a, 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 a sentence, and I want any of the three of you to, to change it for me. So I'm going to say, you need to conduct yourself in an honorable way. What can we do, what can we say instead of you need to? Say the same thing, but saying, replace you need to with something else. You need to conduct yourself in an honorable way. We want to conduct ourselves in an honorable way. Okay, give me another one, somebody. I like that one more. Too. Beautiful. Okay, so, and, and do you see how the subtle difference in words, um, you know, you need to, uh, has a certain feel to it. Or Preachy. As, <laughs> yeah, Mark, you, 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 you totally get this, Mark. So, um, yeah. again, I thought it was a, a very strong uh, practice session. You're well on your way, Mark. I'm very happy to see it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Mestel, are we ready? We're ready. All right, I have one request. Do you think you could lean your camera down a little bit more so we can actually see your whole face? How do I do that? At some points, I just see your nose from your nose up. Are you on a laptop or are you on a um, desktop? I'm on, I'm on a laptop. Can you tilt down the, your screen, tilt it down? Just slightly. There you go. That, 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 that's it. That's now we're cooking. Better. Is that better? That is better. Yes, thank it's you. It's better for us, but does it does it interfere with your view of your, your screen and what you want to see? No, no, this is fine. It's fine. Okay. okay, do you want to see my PowerPoint? Yeah, well, what I'd like to do, if, if I may, is uh, in this particular scenario, the two of you, are, or the three of you, are, are, are basketball coaches. Okay. And the principle that I'm going to be uh, sharing is going to be the same as Mark did, honoring the game. Okay. And I, I, I would like to, the, the PowerPoint, but just to go up to the word roots. Okay. Right there? Oh, sorry. Let's see it. <laughs> so if you can see it, huh? Yeah. That, no, that's, that's, that, that's fine. And, and then, I, obviously, I wouldn't show that during the intro. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. We ready? So whenever, yes, let me get the 20 minutes on the clock. All right. Go for it. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Barry Mistel. Delighted to be here with you. You'll notice uh, on the table over here is, are the books, which are yours, The Power of Double Goal Coaching. And I, I strongly suspect that I, after reading the book, perhaps you might do what I do. I find it as a, as a reference tool. Because um, from time to time we fall into certain pitfalls as coaches, and, and that's not bad. It becomes really good when you find a way to get out of that pitfall. And just referring to this book, I believe will help you. I know it's helped me, that's for sure. You know, I was introduced to Positive Coaching Alliance uh, actually by someone who's, who is a trainer someone that I've known for any number of years, and he suggested that I contact Ruben, and I, I look into it, and in talking with Ruben, I found that basically this is the way I've been coaching, obviously without the, the language of Positive Coaching Alliance, which I had, had to adapt to, but this is the way, so I became more and more mag magnetized to it, and really, really, re really like that. So, having said that, here's what I want you to do. You don't think you're going to sit still throughout this. No way. Here we go. All right. Those of you that have been coaching basketball for 
less than five years, I want you to go to this side of the room. Quick, quick, quick. Good hustle. All right? Those of you that have been coaching five to ten years, go to the center of the room. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, you veterans coaching more than ten years, go to this side. Go to this side of the room. Good. Now, when I say go, you've got to listen to the coach now. When I say go, I want you to go to one of the three sections, but not the one you're in, obviously. Ready? Go. Quick, quick. Good job. Good job. And you know something? The principles that we're going to discuss today of Positive Coaching Alliance applies to all. Whether you're just starting out, whether you've been coaching for a while, or whether you're a seasoned veteran. That's one of the things that I think is so great. What are we doing? We're preparing athletes to win. Obviously, we want to win. Anybody here want to lose? No, nah, of course not. I don't want to lose. We're preparing athletes to win, but simultaneously, we're teaching life lessons. You know, at the end of every game, the scoreboard goes back to 0-0. Zero, zero. But what you can learn from the game begins to add up for a lifetime. And in that regard, you're going to have a lot of winning seasons as a person, as an individual. That's the real win in youth sports. We do this basically by three principles, which we'll discuss. One being the elm tree of mastery. The second being the athlete's emotional tank. And the third being honoring the game. And they, they do become intertwined. They're not, they're not separated necessarily because you'll find yourself, I know I find myself, um, filling the emotional tanks, as we'll discuss, in different scenarios or the elm tree of mastery. So having said that, I need to tell you one more thing. This is all about we. It's not about me. So having said that, plus the fact, I assure you, after all these years coaching, I'm totally Teflon coded. So you can ask exactly what you want. Make a comment, something you don't agree with, you don't understand, whatever you want. That's the way you and I will get the most out of it. Boom. Nice. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> That's the intro. All right. All right. Perfect timing. Awesome. Okay. What I'm going to do is, um, um, as I say, I I honoring the game. And I'm going to start, uh, Kelly, if, if it's okay with you. Sure. As, as soon as I say that, honoring the game, that, that's the one we want. Okay. Right. okay. Um, Did you want to start I, with the video I, or do you want to start with this? No, this. Okay. If I may. That's well, fine. One reason is because they're basketball coaches. And I think that, although it's a wonderful video, please, please don't misunderstand, but they are basketball coaches, might have a tough time relating. Like, how would I do that in basketball? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. obviously do it when it would just be it'd be a bit different. Mm -hmm. It would never have to, it would couldn't be as impactful, if you will. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. So that's the one I'd like to start with. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. All right, here we go. Okay, coaches, we've discussed the first two principles, the elm tree of mastery, the athlete's emotional tank. The third is honoring the game. What do you think I mean by that? What does honoring the game mean to you? Anyone? I think it means respect. I think of respect and honor. <clears throat> okay, Following good. the rules. Pardon me? Following the rules. All right. Nice job. One more. Sportsmanship. Good. All of that is part of honoring the game. One of the ways that I found very, very helpful is by the use of acronyms. And Positive Coaching Alliance, as you'll see in the books, um, has several acronyms. In honoring the game, we use the acronym of ROOTS, R-O-O-T-S. It, it sequentially makes sense. It's an easy way to remember things. And it, it just seems to stick with me, and I, I believe it will with you. The ROOTS. And when the ROOTS work together, similar to the tree that you're looking at, it grows. It all grows together because it works together. Just like a team. Like you want your team to work together. You don't want one person doing everything and four person, four people watching the game. Same thing here. 
What is roots? Well, the R is for rules. Any of you ever break a rule in a game or have your players break the rule? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I could tell you I did. We're basketball coaches. The two easiest ones to do are one, tugging on a tugging on an opponent's jersey. That's easy. The second one is after we score a basket is tipping the ball away, not into the fifteenth row. But but tipping tipping the ball away. What'll that do? You know what that'll do. That'll that'll depress their um, opportunity for a fast break and give us a little bit more time for get back in defensive transition. But what have we done by that? What have we taught our players by that? It's okay to break a rule? No. We don't we don't want that. What 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 do we teach? Rules are made for a reason. We need to follow the rules. And remember, it's not necessarily what we teach, it's what we emphasize. So this has got to be, I believe, one of the things that we should all emphasize. The O are for opponents. You ever beaten a team by a lot of points? Anybody? You have Kelly how how did it feel? I felt great. <laughs> by beating by a lot of points? I mean as a player? It was kind of it was kind of fun. Uh, I'm talking about as a coach. Oh. As a coach, yeah, you don't feel so great as a coach when you crush a team by a lot of points. I I, I, I do. I do. We um boy, you know, uh, quite honestly, um I I I I like to win by a lot. And I it it uh, I I feel I felt good. I felt good when we won by a lot. Okay, well, I, and I, I can understand that, that perspective. Um, let, let's turn it around. Have you ever really gotten crushed? Yes. How'd that feel? Not I didn't great. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's not, awesome. that, that's, not, that's not too much fun. But, you know, a worthy opponent, is, it, it's almost like a gift. Why do I say that? Why do you think I say it's almost like a gift? Uh, well, a worthy opponent uh, pushes you, challenges you. Usually, you, you have to you have to bring your best in order to compete with a worthy opponent. Excellent, excellent. Um, you haven't read this book yet. Seems like you have, <laughs> mm -hmm. because a worthy opponent invariably brings out the best in you. Sometimes you may not realize it. How about a worthy opponent, and the game ends in a defeat. It's still well, it's fine. It's fine. But I'd rather have a worthy opponent and, and end with, in a victory for my team. Real quickly, real quickly, if I may, indulge me into one quick story. Coaching early on in my high school high school coaching career, we're playing against a team that, in their home gym, had held their opponents to less than less than forty points, which is like unheard of at the high school level. Um, we played them one night, and we held them to 49 points. I mean, I mean, that was pretty good, pretty good. The sad part is that we only scored 48. <laughs> after, after the game, uh, obviously, I'm going to go shake the coach's hand, and the coach of that team put his arm around me and not at all sarcastically, not at all sarcastically, he says, you know, coach, that was the best my team played all season long. Mm. Of course, I said, I'm, I'm really glad I had a part to do with that. Mm. And then I walked away, and on my, on my way to the dressing room, to the locker room, I'm saying, you know something? That was a heck of a compliment, because that means that we did. We came, we really rose to the occasion. We did everything we possibly can. How can we ask more of of our team than that. So a worthy opponent to me is is the best kind. I, Ruben, I do agree with you. It's, it's real nice to win. Sometimes it's, when we're really beating the team badly, sometimes it can be difficult. How do you handle this? How do you slow your guys down? You can't tell them to, um, you know, just, just hang on to the ball. It's not like in the pros where you have a 24-second shot clock or high school or college where you have 35 seconds. You just, you just don't want to do that. Um, so I think a, worth, a worthy opponent is great. Officials, that's the next part of the acronym of ROOTS. Any of you ever officiated a basketball game? I have. You have, Kelly? I have. Not easy, is it? <clears throat> no, it's not. You can't win. You can't win. You're in the 50 percentile. 
What I mean by that is every single time you blow the whistle, 50% of the people are going to cheer and think you're great. The other 50%, they're not going to think you're quite so great. But listen to this scenario. You're at a game. All of a sudden, um, the announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play the game, but for whatever reason, inclement weather or whatever, the officials aren't going to be here. How would you feel? Uh, I'd feel uncomfortable. Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. you know, uncomfortable. Like, disappointed. There you go. Good. D disappointed. Why would you feel disappointed, Mark? I would, I would have the opinion that the game would not be officiated as well when we pull somebody out of the stands and you know one of the coaches. Right, e exactly. You know, if the head coach is out ill, unfortunately, the assistant coach can take over. If a few of your players are injured, you've got substitutes. But you take that official or the officials out of the game, the whole complexion of the game changes. Are they going to make mistakes? Absolutely. You know something? Are your players going to miss shots? Yep. Yeah. And as a coach, as a coach, are you going to make a call, a play call, or a substitution that, geez, maybe I'd like to take that back? Any of you ever done that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, not the, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. But the question is with the official, how do you handle that? Now you might feel something inside, right? But you've got to you've got to flush it, as you'll read about in the book. You just flush it, see it away. You're not going to get that call back. There's no instant replay in high school basketball. That I can assure you. You just go on. You just you just move on with that with that official. Um, and make no mistake about it. You're probably going to see that official again sometime later in the season. They remember coaches. They remember players. So I'd rather be an ally of an official than an adversary. That is for sure, without without doubt. The next in the ROOTS acronym would be teammates. How do, how do we honor the game relative to teammates? How, how do you think you do that? I think I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say by, by, by supporting your teammates, uh, especially when they're struggling, maybe? And, exactly. And, and, and it will happen. It's got to happen. It's a long, grueling season. Of course it's got to happen. And as you'll see by one of, our, one of the principles we've already discussed, and perhaps you might be thinking about it now, you've got a player that really having an off night or an off, an off week or whatever um, gets a little bit a little bit down on himself. What a great time to fill that gas tank. That's filling the emotional tank. That's what I said early on about these principles become intertwined and can really enhance e each other. Um, you don't ever want a teammate to feel discouraged. And when they are, or when they do become a little bit discouraged, well, let me turn it around. Um, let's see. Kelly, we'll, 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 we'll ask you this question. You're on, you're, now you're a player, not a coach. You're on a team. You're not real happy with the way you've been playing. Um, you've become a little bit discouraged. How would you feel if another teammate filled your emotional tank? I feel great. Of course. Conversely, what happens if no, no teammate approached you? I'd be really down. You'd probably stay down. Mm -hmm. Well... Again, not to switch sports, but in football, you don't become an All-American because you fell down. You become an All-American when you can get back up. And that's, it's a struggle, but let's all keep in mind that the man at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. It's a climb, but you can get there. We can all get there. And finally, the S would be for self. Respect for oneself. You've got to hold yourself we all have to hold ourselves to a very high standard. When do you think that might become difficult? I think in a high pressure situation in the game. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. What else? When the yeah, other the, team... uh, <coughs> Go ahead, Mark. The, 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 the winning or losing play and, uh, and 
you saw, you know, you one of your players broke a rule. Okay, good. And I, I would have to add to, those are great responses. I'd have to add to that. Because it becomes, for me, especially difficult when your opponents don't hold themselves to the same standards. You don't want to be like water. You don't want to gravitate to its lowest level. I know I don't want to be. With Positive Coaching Alliance, using these principles, we'll all be able to do just that. What's the key? The key is teaching and modeling. They can't be separate. They've got to be the exact same. You can teach all these principles, but you're the motor. You've got to emulate these principles. If you're not modeling, then the teaching really doesn't become anywhere near as impactful. Conversely, if you do model and teach, everything comes together, regardless of what the scoreboard might say. And having said that, with all these principles of the power of double goal coaching, as double goal coaches, you may not go undefeated, but you're going to have a lot of winning seasons. Winning seasons by life lessons, which add up for a lifetime. Any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Done. Done. Well done. I love it. I love whenever you whenever I watch you present, Barry, I always end up writing down this this book of quotes. I just imagine someday you're gonna have like a, a book of quotes like John's Wooden John Wooden's book of quotes and I, I always jot them down. I think these are such good lines to remember. So I have a I have a few of those that I that I was writing down as you were saying them. I thought it was very nice. Um, Ruben, did you want to start or would you like me to get to start? I'll start this time. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I very much enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was strong. And it was very, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but it, it seemed to me, this is the third time I think I've seen you facilitate, you know, your, your audition, um, that your Elm piece, and, and now this one. Um, I thought that this one was the one that you brought the most warmth and, and personality to, and, and like Mark, the feeling I got when, when Mark was facilitating, I thought you, you were doing exactly what you wanted to do. You were where you wanted to be. You were really uh, enjoying your role as a, as a trainer. And uh, th that came through very strong strongly today. And I, I don't remember getting that same feeling uh, before. So I feel like you've taken that to another level. It may have something to do with your great coach, Kelly. I don't know. But... Um, um, or, or, or maybe I just I'm not remembering the other ones uh, clearly enough. So, um, you, you know, uh, I, I like I like the way you had us move at the beginning, and 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 the point that you made that even though there's rookie coaches, veteran coaches, this is for all of us. I I, I thought that was effective. I thought your ex example of the inclement weather and how would you feel when the announcement that the officials aren't going to show up. Mm -hmm. uh, I I I think that is just. Uh, I thought it was wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful, and yeah, it, I mean, it, it totally gets the point across that <laughs> we we gotta appreciate we gotta appreciate these these officials because how do we feel when they're not there, you know? So uh, I, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I like the, the your housekeeping with mentioning the power of double goal coaching right out of the gate, setting the tone for an interaction workshop, we as opposed to me. Um, and then, so my, my one my one idea or, or suggestion is that um, I'd like to see when you do your your facilitation next week, I'd like it for it to, to not be basketball coaches, mm. um, and be, because Barry, the the, the the fact is that maybe ten percent of the workshops you do for PCA will be in a, in a room full of basketball coaches, okay. but the other ninety percent is going to be soccer baseball, rugby, lacrosse, a high school athletic department where multiple sports are represented. And you're ready, Barry, to step beyond basketball with your, your language, your exam. In fact, you did today. You brought in a football. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you brought in football. So I, I would encourage your final to be in front of a group of multi, you know, multi-sport coaches. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. well, thanks, Ruben. 
Mark, do you yep. have a comments for Barry? I do. Uh, let me unmute here. Um, a reference toolbox. I was writing things down that I liked as we went. Um, applying to you, even if you are a veteran coach, was really solid. I really let uh, get veteran coach out of the little crossed arms. I don't. You can't teach me anything. Um, and and write in. Uh, you know, write engage. Um, zero zero after the game. Uh, you know, the scoreboard resets after the game, and you can. But what you've learned in that game is a lifetime worth of, of um, wins. That's that was fantastic. Um, I really like like Ruben. I really like the inclement weather thing. Having me, uh, you know, figure out how I would feel when, the, when, I, when I get the news that the refs aren't showing up. That is beautiful. I'm gonna mm -hmm. steal that like crazy. Yeah. Um, the uh, most difficult when you uh, to for the self. Uh, respecting oneself, the, it, that being the most difficult when your opponents are not. That's true. Um, and then a lifetime of winning seasons, no matter what the most wrapping back. Um, my my uh, one comment would be that I would I would play the Mallory video no matter who you were talking to. Because I see that necessarily. I, just a softball thing. Um, that I think that moment in sports really transcends whatever sport it was, and, and it's it's really more of a, of a uh, an example of players um, doing the right thing no matter what. Um, and I I think I would use that no matter who you were talking with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't the only one writing down quotes. I think everybody else had had lots of uh, quotes they stole from you as well, because everybody repeated the ones. One of the, my favorites was, you know, at the end of the game, the score goes back to zero zero. So if you're only focused on the score, you're going to end up at zero zero after every game. The the uh, life lessons accumulate over time, and I just, again, I, that's that's one of the one of the ones that I'm going to stick with me on. I'm going to ask permission to use. Um, the, the, I mean, what everybody said, I think I agree with what everyone said. Um, I would challenge you, and I did write down a comment, I would challenge you to use other sport examples. Um, I do have a video that I've used, uh, Mitchell, um, I want to say Mitchell Musso, but that's not him. It's a, a basketball player in San Antonio, Texas. It's sort of a Mallory moment, um, happened a few years back with a, a special needs manager. I don't know if you've seen that story where the opposing player tossed him the ball so he could take the final winning shot in the game. So um, I can I can see if I can find that for you if you're doing a basketball workshop. I have used that one before. Um, but I thought, you know, the other, only other comment that I have, um, feedback, critique, is um, don't apologize for telling a story. I think um, especially when you're in front of me as a trainer and knowing that you have coached at so many different levels, high level, uh, what you do now, I, I value your stories as a young coach because I want to hear what works for you and what you've seen work across the ages and, and and I think that's really important so I think it's great to say like oh I've got a quick story for you but the, like the one point you said oh okay you know if you don't mind I'm just gonna tell a little story um, I want your story to be part of your workshop and I want you to work it in and I want you to make sure that we know that the stories the stories are important because they connect you to the audience so don't ever feel like you have to like rush through a story unless it's a you know a 10 minute story but I think you know that as well to keep them short and precise, but don't ever, um, I don't know what the word is, like like lower the value of a story, because I think sometimes stories are even more powerful than bullet points on the slide. Okay. But I really I really enjoyed it. I like the way, too, in the beginning, you were my coach. I like the way you treated the audience as coaches. Like, everybody get up. Okay, go, 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 go. Good job, good job. You know, I, we're all coaches, and we're all used to being coached, so I thought it was neat the way you opened your workshop with coaching us. I think that's a really cool way to do it. I liked it. Thank you. Hey, that I I would second Tony's uh, comment about the stories. I think they're the most valuable part of, of a, well, I think of, of a seminar probably, but also what you bring to the table, uh, your, your, your stories are key. Yeah, absolutely. Thank okay. you very much. I appreciate it. Hi, Heather. How are you? Hi. I'm sorry if I'm joining late. I thought it was at 10 o'clock my time. No, you're fine. No, okay. you're fine. We ha I had people, like, I had two every hour. So. Oh, okay. Okay. No, you're good. You're good. I'm like, ah, sorry. 
No, no, no. I, you know, I just did them on the same hangout so that I didn't have to get off and then get back on again. I, if it's just continuous, I keep it on the same, keep it on the same channel so that we don't have to disrupt it. Um, so Barry and Mark, you guys are welcome to stay on for Heather's, or if you have, um, you know, somewhere you have to go, that I completely understand that. But Heather's going to get her shot now. Um, and I've got time to hang out. So great. Yep, that's great. So Heather, you are um, you are our trainer. You, we can be any audience you'd like us to be. You don't have to be sports specific, but you can ask us to you know whatever you need to do. Ask us to questions or comments or conversations. Um, I'm gonna have 20 minutes on the clock this time, so you do have some more time. Mm -hmm. And we would like to hear how you're gonna introduce the workshop after the partner introduces you with kind of your bio and what you've coached. Um, how would you start the workshop? And then you can go right into any of the principles. Um, did you need my PowerPoint, or do you have a way to see it there? Um, I just kind of have my own notes of where slides are, so I think okay. I'm okay. Okay, that's fine with me. All right, so if you don't have any questions, um, whenever you're ready, you can jump right in. All right, well, uh, you know, thank you for that fantastic introduction. Um, as mentioned, my name is Heather Stewart, and I've been uh, invested 17 years into coaching. Um, I have worked alongside uh, knowledge with and connected with some coaches from the professional and the collegiate levels. Um, and I've worked um, coaching every level of player you can imagine. So from people who have just stepped on the court uh, to people who have been NC2A Division I All-Americans to European pros. So I can definitely relate to the athletes that you're coaching um, at the levels that you're playing. Um, I know that we're not all specifically basketball coaches, but that's fantastic. We're all working with an, uh, athletes here. Um, it's an honor to be here with you, uh, coaches who have also dedicated yourselves to working with our youth in sports. Um, it takes a, a lot of your time, your effort, so uh, I just want to thank you personally for being coaches and for playing a part in our young athletes' lives. I think it's fantastic, and I, and I applaud you for that. Um, and my goal is that we work out of we walk out of this workshop today, uh, this double goal coaching workshop today, with some uh, golden nuggets um, that really you can share. Um, as well as a greater understanding of the role that we play as coaches in our athletes' lives and success, and to help you create an environment of valuing a win just as much as you value um, the life lesson. So really that they go, they go hand in hand. So teaching you that those creating that environment is going to uh, create a more successful athlete as well as a more successful program. My guess is that most of you in this room love to win. If you want to win, raise your hand. I know I love to win, so I'm no different than you. We compete and we play this game to win. But something happened around my fourth year of coaching, and that was that I came across a quote that kind of stuck with me, and uh, my guess is that you've probably heard it. So if you've heard it afterwards, just raise your hand and let me know you've heard it. And that is that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Sit with that for just a second. So if you've heard that, raise your hand, because I know that that's kind of gone around sports worlds and everyone's heard that quite a bit, but as many of these sports quotes, they just kind of come in and come out. But if you sit with it and understand the true meaning of it, that's where I started to learn to understand what a double goal coach was. And although I didn't know the words, I didn't know what it meant, that's kind of where I wanted to go with my career um, in coaching. And so what I learned is that uh, my athletes, if they knew how much I cared about them, then not only were we going to be successful on the court, which we kind of already were, we, we already had success, but I felt like I was missing something. And in adding them understanding how much I really cared, we were able to take our program um, as an entity and we were able to um, elevate it. So, um, you know, another a, a great thing that I learned along the way is that I ran into a coach uh, very kind of early in my career, uh, Don Showalter, who is a USA basketball coach, and uh, I'm, I'm able to work alongside with him every year. And uh, one of the things that he taught me about learning is that once you think you know it all, it's time to quit. And he said it's a disservice to you as a coach and a disservice to your athletes if you're not continually seeking knowledge and sharing it. And that is really what brought me to Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, I feel like I've, I've, through the 17 years, I have a wealth of knowledge, but I feel like there's so much more to learn, and, and Positive Coaching Alliance allowed me to learn more. So I'm really excited to teach you the things that I've learned, and my hope is that you pass it on and pass knowledge on to your fellow coaches and your athletes. Um, this will be an interactive workshop. I've spoken with your AD, so I know that we have a fantastic mix of years of experience as well as sports represented tonight. 
So before we begin, if you've been coaching for more than seven years, raise your hand. Right, so that's about half of you based on the conversation I had with your athletic director. So if you have your hand up, I want you to go sit next to someone who has their hand down. I want, I want there to be a great mix of experience and new fresh coaches because what we've learned is that the experience itself is so knowledgeable. Uh, you've been through just about everything if you've been coaching for greater than seven years. Um, and the new fresh perspective of young coaches um, is a very valuable tool that an experienced coach can learn from. So we're going to do some interacting, we're going to do some sharing, so, so we're going we're gonna to mix you guys up a little bit. So go ahead and move to your seats. All right, so now that we're all set and we've been through a great portion of our, our presentation, we're going to jump into our next uh, principle. Um, we're going to look at this slide, and this is uh, this slide. Let, tell me if anyone recognizes this, and this is our this is the Mallory slide. So we've jumped to honoring the game. Okay, so does anyone recognize this image? Let's watch a quick video about it, and let's let's just have a little chat about it afterwards. So we watch the video. All right, so this game is to determine champions, and, and you know, no one was allowed to help Sarah uh, or, or her team, or she would have been called out. And if you're the opposition here, you know uh, that if, he, if she doesn't round those bases, you win. You know that. And, uh, you know, her teammate, uh, Sarah, um, Mallory Holtman had a moment, though. She had a moment that uh, her and her teammate decided that they were going to go above and beyond sportsmanship, and they were going to do what we call honoring the game. And... Um, in that moment, you know, Mallory decided that it was more important to show good character um, than to get the win. And you know, uh, Sarah's head coach was very emotional about it afterwards. And she said that it's a great moment when someone has character to step up and do the right thing at the right time. That says a lot. But how would you feel if you were Mallory's coach? Give me two volunteers to just tell me how you would feel if you were Mallory's coach in that moment. I'd be proud. That's a great word, Kelly. Mm -hmm. yeah, what about you? Proud what also. You? Proud also? Yeah. Great. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. And, and you know, um, uh, Mallory's coach was, and, and he was quoted in saying, it's emotional. You're proud to be associated with these kids. But how many of you have come across a coach, uh, either you know a coach or you've played against a coach, who might be a little bit upset at first that they didn't get the win? Mm -hmm. There are some coaches out there who would be more upset about the fact that they didn't win. Oh, we'll help her afterwards. Let's get the win first, right? Oh, she couldn't get around the bases. Oh, that's on her, you know. Those are what we call win-at-all-cost coaches. And those coaches don't understand the value of honoring the game. Uh, this moment is not mentioned in the video, but this moment won an SP. That's how powerful something like honoring the game in this moment can mean. So... You have already learned, moving on to the next slide, you've already, you've already learned about the elm tree. So tell me what the E stands for. Effort. effort. Everybody yell it out. Effort, okay. Effort. effort. What does the L stand for? Learning. 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 Okay, and what's the M? Mistakes. Mistakes. How you handle them? Mistakes are good or bad? Okay. Good. good. They're okay. We can learn from them, right? Absolutely. So that's what we want to do is we want to learn as mistakes are part of growth. In addition to that, you've already learned about filling your player's emotional tank and the value and the importance in that. So what's missing? What's missing? So let's take a look at our elm tree. So Kelly Kratz, our lead trainer, made a visual reference to this elm tree that really resonated with me. And I'm going to tweak it just a little bit, but I'd love you to take, take a look at this picture of this tree. And here's what stuck with me. Look at the leaves of the tree. Those are your athletes. Those are the players. Those are the ones coming through your program. And we know every single thing, the leaves on the trees, they fall off, they change, they regrow. That's just like our programs, right? The branches of the tree, that's your action, your knowledge, and your words that you impart to those athletes that will have a direct effect on them as they leave your tree. The trunk of the tree, that is you as a coaching staff. That is you. That is your, uh, your um, assistants. That is your staff. That is the one that is imposing those knowledge, those words, and that wisdom. But what happens when we come across a really, really, really big storm with our tree? What happens if you don't have any roots? Anyone? Fall over. Mm -hmm. He's going to fall over, right? Like you think you're doing great work. You have 
wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful examples of stories that you can tell and knowledge that you can give your athletes, but you have no roots. So we understand that every athlete, every coach comes across times in their path that you have storms. If you've had a storm, if you've had a storm, just raise your hand. And a storm can be anything. It can be athletes. It can be, you know, coworkers. It can be parents. It can be administration. So. When we look at the realm of what a storm can be in our programs, we have to understand that that can come from a very uh, varied uh, range of what that can be. And so it's very important that we have strong, solid roots. And so we're going to take a look at these roots and understand what they really are. Uh, the R in roots is for rules. And th what that means is you know, we're going to follow the rules to the, to the uh, specific of whatever sport we're in. And, uh, you know, we think of rules and rules are meant to be broken and you know that you hear that growing up and you know in, in sport and in honoring the game rules are not meant to be broken um, but there's many times that they can be so tell me just a couple of examples I'm going to ask two of you to just give me a couple of examples of a rule in your sport that can kind of be bent a little bit knowing it's not really meant how it's meant to be but it can kind of be bent a little bit and uh, that you can still kind of get away with it anyone have an example? Um, kicking the ball with your feet in field hockey yeah, and we know that's a no-no, right? Mm -mm. But your athletes can get away with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Missing a base when you only have one umpire, when you only have a, 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 a home plate umpire. Can oh, cut so the didn't... corner on second. Yeah, so he didn't see it, did he? Yeah, so we, we know and we understand that there are things that we can get away with in our game. And if we as coaches, if we allow our players to get away with those things, then we are setting the tone and the example for what they may do on the field of play. So it's important that we follow the rules and we understand that. Uh, the O is for your opponents. And, you know, a lot of times when I have a young daughter and you know, she'll come across the team and she'll be like, oh, I hate that team. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, these, 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 are, these are kids that love the game and play the game just like you do. And, you know, because they're hard and they're physical and they're tough and, and uh, you know, you don't like that when you're playing against them, truthfully, it only makes you better. Um, you know, and I have an example of a high school I was coaching. Uh, we, our men's program uh, kind of had a rivalry with one of our other schools. And um, they, they kind of got into a... Uh, over and above a rivalry where there were things being planned and plotted out for vandalism and so on and so forth. Um, and our our team was playing against their team and, and we kind of had some heated exchanges but I really respected the other coach. I thought that she was a really good coach. And so I have the opportunity, I work with the Warriors basketball and I, I coach youth camps and so I've had an opportunity to take my teams to do what's called an Oracle experience where we take our team, we sit front row and we get able to, warm, uh, to watch and warm up. So what I did is I, I extended an invitation to that coach of the other program on the girls' side, and I invited her team to join us because I knew this rivalry was going to kind of it was eating up our school. It, it was actually becoming an issue. So I reached out to that coach and I and I imparted a, I, I offered an invitation to come and join us for this Oracle experience. Um, and, and what we found, because instead of having hatred and anger and animosity and rivalry, is that they found they had a lot in common. Once we got the girls together, they're like, oh, they're actually kind of cool, and they like the same things, and it's fun. And so, um, and they still to this day talk about that experience at Oracle and, um, you know, and the friends that they've made. And now those young ladies, um, they're friends. You know, you see them on social media talking to each other and all sorts. So, uh, you know, understanding that valuing our opponents is very important. Um, the second O is for officials. Yes, we've all had our interactions with officials that we would rather not have. Um, we've all had good ones and we've all <clears throat> had some that aren't so great. Um, if you would love to be an official, please raise your hand. Oh. Uh, okay, one. Oh, there's one of you that might, might want to be an official. Okay, so what does that tell you? That tells you that being an official is not necessarily the most loved thing that you can do. It's kind of what we call a thankless job. You could show up, you get yelled at, you screamed at, you're never right. Um, and no matter if whoever wins or loses, someone thinks it's your fault, right? So based on the fact that none of you want to be officials, what would happen if no official showed up? If there's a bunch of us that want to play this game, we cannot play our game. We cannot compete without officials. So teaching the value of what officials do, they allow us to play and compete. So, you know, one of the things that we can do as coaches is that we can make sure that we thank our officials for being there, regardless of the score, regardless of how they competed, how they won, how they called, how, whatever it was, we can make sure that we thank our, our officials just for being there so that we can compete. And do that in a way that your players can see it. 
make sure your athletes see that you're appreciating the fact that they're showing up so that we can compete. Um, so one of the things that's tough to, to control with, uh, you know, with the officials is your parents. Uh, your parents can get a little bit rowdy from the crowd, uh, and they can be yelling and screaming and, and uh, not really representing what you want. And so, you know, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but teaching them how to have a self-control routine as well as yourself is going to be really important. And there's going to be some tools that we can offer you. And um, I'm going to show you a few things a little bit later. But there are some things that you can hand out when we talk about culture, and, and we'll get into that. Um, but so understanding that the officials are there, they're doing the best they can. We just know going in, have that parents meeting, understand that, hey, we're going to have some officials that are not great, but we can't do what we do without them. The T is for team, teammates, um, and, and what kind of team you want to be and, and, and teammate you want to be. Um, when you walk away from this game 20 years from now, how many of you are going to remember every score on the scoreboard? Probably not. There's going to be a lot of games that you were really upset about, you were mad about. There will be some games that you know you, you, you will remember. You will remember the score because it was that one-point game. And so you'll remember some of that. But what you'll walk away with is relationships. And you're going to walk away with relationships of teammates that our hope is that when things are either great or bad, or you've got weddings coming up, or you've got funerals that you have to attend, that those teammates will be the ones that will be there for you in the future. And you have the ability to create that environment as a coach, to create the environment for these teammates to kind of move on and be respectful. So what I would love to do, because forming a team and respect and uh, closeness, is I'd like you guys to take a minute and talk to the person that you just sat next to uh, in the beginning of the workshop. And we're going to talk about a minute about something that you do to build team bonding. Okay, go ahead and have your, your discussion. Okay, minute goes by. Okay, so I'd love to hear two examples of uh, what you do for team bonding with your teams that maybe all of us can learn from and grow. Um, I have something I, I do with my, I have 12 year old lacrosse players and uh, one of the first things of the season I have huge, uh, a poster that has like a stick person on it and the girls have to get in groups of five and they have to find, uh, they have to write down five strengths that they have as a player and as a person. Five have to be skills, athletic skills, and five have to be personal skills that they're really good at. Could be sense of humor, could be persistence, never give up, it could be a fast runner, and they have to create this person on the poster using qualities of all the, the girls that are in the group. So there's like three or four girls in a group, they all have to contribute at least one athletic quality and one personal quality, and they create this perfect player based right. on that. So it's just a way for them to see each other's strengths and weaknesses and, and how they can help the team. Wow, you know, Kelly, that's pretty powerful. I'm actually going to steal that one. That's that's great. I don't. Go other it. coaches, feel free to feel free to steal because this is this is where we all share knowledge. Uh, let's get another example. Um, in in volleyball practice, oftentimes there's a a, a point in practice where two players uh, pass the ball back and forth, either what we call playing pepper or they they forearm pass, they set back and forth, and so we we constantly mix up the partners, sometimes from practice to practice, but sometimes even within a practice, we might have them rotate partners several times so they, um, you know, they're interacting, uh, uh, playing, practicing, bonding with, with a different teammate throughout. Definitely. And what is that? That, that builds, that's going to build trust. That's going to build where we're, we're reaching out, maybe outside of our comfort zone. And that's something that, you know, once our athletes learn it, it's, you, we can invest in one another. I think that's an excellent example, Ruben. Thank you for sharing. Um, and, you know, and uh, so we're going to move on to the last thing of roots, and that's, that's our self. That's our self-respect. And this means that we're, you know, we, we understand that our own personal roots are deep-rooted, strong, and healthy. Um, because in, in order to be able to have self-respect and, and teach our players that our own personal roots are extremely important and that we have to be able to have those strong roots so that we can also, when that Mallory moment happens to us, how are we going to respond personally? Um, so having self-respect is, is one of the key things and maybe one of the most important because that's what can lead to everything else. So if we understand now and we look back out of our elm tree, and now we've established, you know, we have established our roots. We have, a, we have an entire uh, a program. Um, we have an entire um, athletic department now, if we've all invested in this, that have deep-rooted roots. And they're strong and they're healthy. So no matter what leaves come and go, 
uh, no matter um, you know what other staff come and go. The roots, which are your culture, is really what's going to build and develop your program. So with your roots being your culture, we're going to kind of talk about culture a little bit. And uh, you know, culture is one of those uh, kind of catch words. Oh, what's your culture? What's your culture? And and you know, a lot of times it's very hard to articulate uh, what does culture mean. Um, and so one of the best things that I found from PCA is that the easiest way to articulate culture is the way we do things here. So if someone were to ask you about your culture, are you able to cliche elevator pitch what your culture is? Well, we can do it in five seconds, and that's the way we do things here. And, uh, and that means, based on your elm tree and your roots and, and everything that you've learned, is like how are we going to, how are we going to do things the way our program is going to be represented? Um, we ask coaches to be leaders in that and to show and to share. And you have to develop your culture. And, and you know, some of you may be brand new to your programs, and some of you may have been in your programs for five years now. And you maybe just need a, a little boost or you need a kick or something like that. And so um, one of the cool things about PCA is all of the references that they have are available to share. And so um, I brought just a couple of examples to show you, but I, I want you to know that you can go get these individually yourself. And, and when you're uh, talking about the culture of your program, I think it's really important that you start with parents meeting. And in your parents meeting that you have a, an opportunity to talk about things like um, there's a parent guardian uh, letter here that you can print and give, and it teaches everything that we've just talked about, your roots and, and culture. So it's very important. Um, so honoring the game, um, we, we, we talked earlier about a self-control routine, and we also want to make sure that we, we give you those tools um, and understand that in, in your book on page 46, there's a toolkit for all of the things that we just talked about. So on page 46, and it goes 46 through 51, so there's a good range of tools that you can use and, and have a self-control routine. And so that self-control routine is something that you can do in the heat of the moment or your parents can do in the heat of the moment that can kind of just calm you down. Um, so if I can just get one example of a self-control routine that you do. Walk, walking get down to the, calmly walking to the end of the bench and getting a, uh, a drink of water. That's great. So that's a great quick example of something that you can do. And there are so many self-control routines or rituals that you can do in order to be able to just kind of calm yourself in the heat of the moment. Um, and there's things that you can do. I know I'm fast. There's things that you okay. can do for your parents as well. Um, and so, you know, just j just a quick one. If you've done your if you've done the, the work in, in creating your culture, um, I think a really cool idea is just having kind of a flash card that says the word roots on it. And you know when your audience, uh, when your crowd are across the stands from you, start kind of getting out and saying, "You've got your assistant coach," and they just stick up that sign and it says "Roots," and they kind of, and all the parents can kind of go, oh, "Okay, okay, got it." So understanding that that's really important. Um, uh, so you know when it comes to you, and we talked about this Mallory moment, we we want to know how you're going to respond in that tough moment. We want you to understand that um, your programs can have strong, hearty roots, be able to stand up and do what is right in, in, by honoring the game when that Mallory moment comes to you. You're all going to have one um, at some point, either you or your athletes. There will be a choice to make either right or wrong. Um, and our, our hope is that as you continue to grow and develop as a coach, that you will learn those Mallory moments are extremely important. So in closing, I, I know that we don't officially have any left. But in closing, I know we have just a few minutes left, and I'd like you to turn to the back of your Double Goal Coach book, um, and I'd like you to write down three nuggets of knowledge that you can take away from this workshop today and begin implementing in your program tomorrow uh, or the first day of your season. And I don't want this to be the end of this conversation, so I ask that you take those nuggets and you share them with the coach next to you, and you share them with other coaches in your program, and then I ask that Maybe a, maybe a few weeks from now or a month from now, you follow up and see how they're doing with those nuggets that they wanted to implement. Make yourselves accountability partners so that you can kind of count on one another and maybe bounce suggestions off of each other on, on what it really means to be a double goal coach. So thank you for your time. Uh, I, I appreciate the time you being here. And, and if you have any questions at all, please reach out. Um, there's a wealth of knowledge on the development zone. Uh, as well as your double goal coaching and this fantastic book for your athletes should they get the opportunity of elevating your game. So that's another uh, great tool that you have for your athletes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. Sorry I went long. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs>
Kelly, Kelly, why don't I jump in with a couple comments and then I'll get on our 10:30 call and let folks know that you're finishing up. Does that sound okay. good? Yep, yeah. sounds great. Um, so, so, so Heather, um, my 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 one suggestion, uh, or or it's not even a suggestion, just uh, uh, checking for understanding. When when you get into the 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 the, the you know write down three nuggets, um, you 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 you're going beyond the roots section at that point. Right, so it's wrapped up at the end. Yeah, yeah. 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 so that yeah. now yeah. we've done okay. the whole presentation, got past yeah. the honoring. This is because honoring, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of that okay. was kind well, of all good. All good. So, so um, so several of the th I, I thought it was wonderful. Um, I liked I liked your opening a lot. Your comments, uh, the fact sharing that you've coached at all levels and can relate to coaching all all ages. You know, I I really like starting the workshop by thanking folks for for coaching. I, I, I tend to end that way, but it, you know why not start that way too? So I like that. Um, and then you, you know your little piece about your mentor coach and the idea of continually seeking and sharing knowledge. Um, you know what matters is, is is what matters most is what you learn after you know it all. That that type of concept. Um, so I, I liked all those things. I thought the or, or, Oracle experience with Rival School was a wonderful, powerful example. And then I liked the fact that you actually had one of the tools from DevZone, the, the, the printed um, parent meeting agenda. You held it up. You showed us. Um, I'm going to print a couple of those because uh, we've, we've added a slide at the end of the deck about the DevZone.org. And I think that helps bring it to life for people when they actually see an example. So sorry for zipping through that. Um, thoroughly you. enjoyed it, Heather and, and Mark. Uh, thank you. Kelly, awesome awesome work with these uh, talented trainer prospects. Thank you, oh, Ruben. Thank you. I'll be on in a few minutes, Ruben. All right. I, you know, actually, I love, I, I print out a couple of those just on, just while he's while on the topic. Um, I usually have like 10 parameting agendas printed out. I have 10 um, coach job descriptions and I, I have them like right there on the table. So, so as people are leaving, I'll say, you know, these are resources available on our website, but if you'd like to take a look or take one with you, and people always grab them, and they're yeah. always like, oh, these are really good. These are great. Mm -hmm. So some people that might not be as, like, willing to go home and check the website, it's, it's right. a handout. People like to take things home with them. So um, those, I think it's a great idea to have them right there. And just show them also how user-friendly it is. It's, and I tell them, too, you know, stick your Falcons logo on it. You know, we don't care. We're, we're yeah. giving this a free resource. You know, if you want to claim it as your own, feel free. Just put the PCA logo in the side so we get credit too. But it makes people feel, even the parent letter, um, you know, it's nice. I just, you know, slap your name on it. Go ahead. Let the, take credit. That's fine. As long as you're doing it right, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> so I thought that was good. I really liked Heather. I think you, you just sound very confident when you're speaking. You were very smooth. You weren't getting caught up. Your pace was great. Um, you smiled, but you had serious moments too. So it was a good balance of you know your tone of voice being serious and funny and laughing. Um, again, I wrote down some some great quotes. The same thing. I think it was great when you said, um, you know, when you think you know it all, it's time to quit. I mean, I think that's such a great a great thing, especially as Mark said before, for those arm crossers that sit in the front row that think they know it all. I mean, it's such a great thing just to get that out of the way right off the bat. Um, I like the way that you had the experienced coaches sit next to an inexperienced coach. That's so simple to do, and that can just start discussion. I'm, I'm especially thinking that would be great in a room that doesn't have a lot of mobility space. Um, sometimes we're in a room, and I love to get people up and moving around and get the, this group and go over there, and you're like, I, you really can't even squeeze by. Mm -hmm. But having them get up and move once is not the end of the world either. So I think I think that would be a great thing to do. But that was good. Um, I like the way you did extra research about the Mallory moment. Um, there's little, you know, quotes from coaches in there. There actually is another Mallory moment video that's a little bit longer that mm -hmm. uh, we have available for you to use that does have an interview with her coaches. And I, I don't know if you saw that when I watched. Yeah, it's good. It's a good video. Um, the reason that we don't use it in all of them is because it's long. I think it's like four minutes or something it like is. that. Mm -hmm. but, but it's a great video. And I think from a coach's perspective, I love to show this one for the athletes, but I think from a coach's perspective, it is really good to mention, you know, what the coaches were thinking. Um, I love the leaves, leaves of the tree. When you said, like, this is something I borrowed from Kelly Kraft, I'm like, did I give you that? That was awesome. I no, love that. You, you, you actually, I watched some of your old, your other, I went online and just watched some of your old presentations. And so you had mentioned it kind of, like, briefly, but I thought, yeah. oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I did, I do, I do use, like, the leaves of the tree. Like, I always say, your athletes, you know, that they come and go. But, you know, I liked how you got more specific. Like, the branches are the action and knowledge, and the trunk is you as a coach, and the and the roots are your culture, and I thought that was really that was really great. 
Um, I used to always say, because I'm from Pennsylvania too, and the leaves always change colors, and I would always say, like, think about all the different leaves on your tree. Think about all the different colors of all these kids mm -hmm. coming to you, and how can you possibly hold them together if you don't have strong roots? There's no way. They'll be yeah. all over the place. So I, I thought that was really, that was I great. I thought you were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like you. I like when I get credit for brilliance in front of my boss too. It's a good thing. <laughs> Never hurts to get brownie points with Ruben, because um, as you can tell, he's very picky about words. So I thought that was very good. Yeah. Um, I think you know all your examples, just your roots things. I think you did a nice job, um, and you didn't get to see Mark present, but Mark, I think you got to see what we mean by like making it interactive in the middle of each um, each one of them. I think Heather did a really nice job at explaining it, but then getting us to think. And, and the other thing, too, it wasn't always the exact same question. So I think you, the way you phrased the questions, you got us thinking in different ways. It wasn't just, how do you respect your teammates? How do you respect opponents? How do you respect, you know, you made us think about different types of questions, and I thought that was, that was really nice. Um, and, you know, again, I love it when you, when you talk about nobody's going to remember the score, but you will remember the relationships. And I was just cracking up because for 25 years, my friends and I from high school get together once a month for dinner. And I was just with them last night, and I was like, this is so funny. Like, I met all of you guys in seventh grade on my field hockey team, and we're 44, and we're still getting together for dinner. Like, it's, it's really neat that way. Um, so I thought, I thought you just did a great was, There wasn't any – there were no red flags that went off for me. The only thing that I would, I would caution you is your timing um, yeah. because you did – you did. It was 20 minutes, which is a pretty good amount of time, and I don't think you would have had enough time to necessarily go into the whole like more talking about culture. And I mean, you finished the concept, but just be be aware that you've got so many good ideas, just to make sure that you are keeping the pace. You can always go back later. Yeah, you can always go back later. Um, and you're a very um, verbal linguistic person, so you do you do a nice job explaining things with words. But I think sometimes I'm I'm the same way. I think sometimes I talk way more than I should. Right. And sometimes keeping it simple is more powerful. But again, I, I don't, I don't have any issue with that. I thought you did a nice job. Okay. Mark, did you have any um, comments? Feedback? Yeah, I'll keep them short because I, I know you got to go, Kelly. Um, I, I, I love the personal thank you for being a coach thing that like made me excited that I showed up. Um, uh, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That's solid. Um, the really, I, th I like the once you think you know it all, it's time to quit because what that did is is it reinforced the fact that I should be there um, mm -hmm. because you know I don't want to admit that I think I know it all. You know, even if I showed up and that's how I thought, that's how I felt. At least now you've sh you've at least shamed me into <laughs> into uh, you know, wanting to stick around and and you know. Uh, but I really like that um, moving the vets to the rookies. I'm totally going to steal that. That's great. Um, the athletes is leaves thing. Awesome. Good job, Kelly. Uh, the opponents getting your rivals together socially, and um, I like that. That was powerful uh, statement story. And then the officials. Raise your hand if you want to. If you want to be an official, mm -hmm. um, that was really good. That that is, yeah. we, we had another we had another thing with Barry um, where he asked, uh, "How would you feel if you got the word?" Uh, we're all here ready to play the game, and we're going to play the game, but the officials can't make it. How, how would that make you feel? Um, and those two things, I think, were both equally uh, good at making me go, oh, wow, um, yeah, boy, I, I really don't want to be an official, and, and <laughs> it must really suck, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they are and kind of my, important. <laughs> yeah, sort of important, yeah. Um, the one thing I'd tell you is the, the self, uh, the, the, very, the last one of the roots, um, I think that is the most important one, and I would hit that a lot harder than you did, um, okay. because without without that, without true self-respect, you, you don't get any of the other four. Um, so yeah. it really is the most important one. Thanks. Yeah, and actually, too, I wrote down just just to share with you. Um, someone said to me years ago in a workshop, I, I <laughs> stole it from them. Um, they were talking about no one knows how much you know, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And they said, as coaches, we need to earn the right to be heard. And, and that really stuck with me, that we, just because we have a whistle around our neck doesn't mean that we demand to be heard and to be listened to. What do you do as a coach to earn your athlete's respect? And, and that, that kind of like stuck with me, because when I coach sometimes, I'm thinking, oh, you know, you listen to me because I'm the coach. Right. But when you actually think about, have I earned the right to be heard? By, no, I haven't showed them I care. I haven't showed, you know, so I thought that just, that stuck with me, and I wrote that down when you said that, because it was on the same track. Well, that was good. 
Great. All right. Well, thanks. Well, what I was, um, what I want to let you know, since you guys have already done the emotional tank and you've both done honoring the game for the final, if you would like to do Elm Tree of Mastery, so that you can, you know, say you've gone through all three, it's a great idea to do. If you'd like to take any of our suggestions from today and do honoring the game again, that's fine too. But it's just, it's nice to be able to to say, you know, at the end of this course, this is our perfect scenario is that everyone would have gone through all three principles so by the time we send you out live you can say okay yeah I've done it I've done it in front of someone even if it's not live okay. so um, okay. that's a suggestion and we're also I'm actually going getting on a staff call um, very soon and I am re I've been pushing for a year for this but I'm really pushing to get the next step to be live audiences live fake audiences so that you can go through a workshop um, with the comfort of knowing it's not in front of real coaches yet but I'm trying to get Minnesota does it and Tampa does it. I'm trying to get all the offices to do it. So I'm, I'm pushing for that um, very, very soon. So it probably won't happen for this time, but um, I just want to let you know. So for next week, it will probably still be a hangout unless uh, somebody, maybe maybe Ruben will come to Mountain View. He might do that. He might come to San Francisco. Can but, we um, this be 20 minutes also? It's the exact same thing as this. Yep, exact same thing. And what I like to do is get um, some, like, uh, hopefully, I, I send the invitation out so that people from your local chapter, like your executive director, partnership manager, somebody besides just Ruben and I, can mm -hmm. actually watch to get right. to know you. Because right. a lot of times what happens is, you know, the people graduate from my course, and they're out there, and I say, yeah, they're awesome. Get Heather out there. She needs to be with somebody. And they're like, well, who's Heather? I don't know Heather at all. Right. So, you know, I want, I, I always feel like I'm pushing for like, oh my gosh, I've known this person for seven weeks. They're awesome. You've got to get them out <laughs> in front of people. And they're like, it's just a name. I don't know this person. So right. I try to get more people on these calls so they can see what you guys have to offer sooner than later. So, but we'll get cool. you out there. So Thank I'm going to put another, um, what I'm going to do, what I do for next week is to help because every single person has to do the final. Not everybody had to do the practice. What I do is I'm going to send an email out, and I ask you to send me top three times that you're available, and mm -hmm. then I'll schedule an individual appointment with you. So it works out better that way. Nobody can say, oh, none of your times fit my schedule. Um, so just give me your top three times, and I'll try to make them work one way or another. Thanks, Joe. Right. That was my question. Right. Thank you. Yep, Great. that's it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.